so uh, and that talk is dedicated for the memory of Benny Shaw, my advisor, that my great friend and, and researcher that was the three of us, Eliezer, myself and him, actually carry a long legacy and memories. So yeah, it's a past, a year ago he passed away, uh, very young, very tra 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 tragedy. Okay, so um, the outline is the following. Uh, we first uh, introduced the jump model, then a genome as a continuous time Markov, Markov process. Um, reconstructing the prokaryotic phylogeny using the Synteny index. And this project actually spans quite a few papers and years, um, thinking about it, and results on real microbial data and the pursuit after analytic quantities. And the nat neutral model of genomic islands. Okay, so some parts are, are even new here. So uh, what is phylogeny? It represents the evolutionary history. You all should be very acquainted with that already. And leaves represent living species and internal nodes represent extinct species. And branches represent evolutionary relationship. Okay, so we have the tree is actually some sort of, it's a history and also a model for generating that history, okay, in more modern approaches. Okay, so uh, from trees to networks, let me jump over all the phylogenetic history and background and move directly. So classical evolutionary school, the Darwinian school, results in a tree-like relationship, which means that every uh, organism has a, a single ancestor. This actually uh, yields a tree-like relationship. However, some very significant biological processes result in a network relationship like that. One such process is lateral gene transfer which is the transfer of genetic material between distantly related organisms, okay? So, let us speak a little bit more. So, actually, I wanted to exclude that slide because it's not very... But then I returned it because we will return to it um, later in. But what that means is that HGT or LGT is very rampant. And if you look here and you see these uh, circles, they represent strains of E. coli, very near um, or related organisms, okay? Strains of E. coli separated, I don't know how many million years back. And even they share very, I think it is like 30%. Only 30% of the gene pool, and someone asked um, a week ago about the pangenome. So it related to all this talk that I'm speaking about. Anyway, I think something like only 30 or 40% of the gene pool are shared between these very near organisms, okay, the, the E. coli strains. And that's why I returned this slide. However, however, the main trend of evolution, even in prokaryotes, uh, any questions? Yeah, yeah, please. Just a random question. So do we only see lateral gene transfer in microbes, or have we seen it in other species too? Oh, yeah, 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 but let's not get to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. rampant, and you have it between plants, and, and of course, in the microbiome. Of course, it's all over. But, you know, it needs to, you know, not every gene transfer is inherited, okay? Anyway, um, yeah, so the main trend of evolution, and now it is well agreed upon, is a tree or, or vertical, a vertical trend of evolution. You have between, if you, if you this is like magnification or, or magnifying glass of here, 
but with lots of gene transfer and even between distant uh, species, but the main trend of evolution is vertical, okay? So, um, AGT hampers phylogenetics, and this is by no means, uh, this is not a tree-like uh, uh, mechanism or process. Can we use HGT for phylogenetics? This is one question. And the other question is, why to do that? We have, we have other mechanisms for HGT, why to use, uh, for phylogenetics, why using um, HGT for that? Okay, so, quite a few years ago, we introduced the Synteny Index, trying to answer the first qu question, can we do something about it? So let's, so the Synteny Index compared the neighborhood of one specific gene in two genomes, so you see now gene G, so gene G is some specific gene, for instance, uh, REC A or whatever, or, or hemoglobin or whatever. And, and it, it exists in two genomes. So we define the neighborhood around gene G, okay? And now we compare that neighborhood in terms of the, of the identity of shared genes, okay? So, yeah, and it combines both gene content, the shared genes, and gene order because of, of that G that defines the order, some order, okay? So, it is, it is, it, this is the novelty of that Synthene Index, and, and actually it gained quite a nice, decent, um, uh, uh, well, uh, acknowledgement, okay? So, um, this is one thing, what happened to me now? Oh, I see. Okay, uh, so when averaged over the entire genome, it provides some measure of distance or similarity. How much among all the gene pool, genes are shared and their neighborhood are, 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 are also similar? Okay, for, for a shared gene, it's neighborhood. So, for instance, if you will, if you will take identical genomes, your SI Synthene Index will be, of course, one if you normalize it. Okay, they are identical. So, it can be used to construct trees. And, and since uh, 2014, this is what we are doing. However, and now some lateral, uh, so at 2018, Mike Steele came to visit Ben Shore Tel Aviv. And I came to Mike and I told him that model. Because I, the guys that you know me for all the years here know that I'm always after some modeling, some analytics. And I told Mike, Mike Steele, I told him the following. Consider the following model. A genome G with, with large, we, okay, did, it evolved, okay, but with, with large, uh, large N genes. And there are N plus one slots in a genome where a new gene can be inserted, okay. And now every gene G by a Poisson random process with rate lambda jumps to another one, another slot, one slot out of the other slots in the genome. Okay, this, okay, and that, that target position is chosen uniformly at random. So there was no really random process or stochastic process describing what? describing um, gene order deterioration, okay? So this comes to, to fulfill that. Okay, so that is the, that is the jump. So, you, so every gene, every gene at some Poisson process, random process, jumps somewhere uniformly. And of course, if you tell it to actually almost anyone, she will tell you, uh, hey, 
but genes do not genes do not uh, jump uh, uniformly and they do not choose uniformly in order let's see if i have it here the jump model corresponds to several evolutionary processes such as translocation gene gain loss okay and its simplicity and randomness the power of randomness that is now very common and widespread in computer science and, 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 and all over, in particular in learning, allows rigorous analysis that was not expected initially. And the assumption of large genome, of course, allows us asymptotic results, as will be shown, okay, that we can that we don't really, that, that, you know, esoteric, like a jump, a very near jump. Normally when you jump, you jump somewhere very far. Okay, so um, the above modeling defines a genome actually as a continuous time Markov chain where your state in the chain are the gene order. Okay, or the genome. Every, every gene order is some state in that uh, Markov chain. And the state of a process are all n factorial genome permutations. So let's, let us get some, some concep conception about how it goes. So, and, and, and and consider uh, a reference gene G sub L and a neighboring gene G sub L prime, okay? Not adjacent somewhere, but in, in that neighborhood. And look at, look at that lambda. So you have lambda getting in and lambda getting out, okay? Into every slot you have a rate lambda and a rate lambda of every gene jumping out. And like I told you, you can ignore, asymptotically, you can ignore the, the, the less important or the, the, yeah, the less dominant uh, uh, phenomena of, of small jumps. Okay, the, the I equal L prime minus L slots between GL and GL prime. Now every transfer into the interval L uh, uh, comma L prime increases the distance between GL and GL prime and every AGT out of that between them make them uh, uh, getting uh, um, closer. Okay, yeah, that animation is always slow. Yeah, the animation slows the... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we, here we have this animation. So G sub H jumps into and, and then G L prime gets out of the neighborhood. Now when Ah, again. <laughs> when GH jumps out, GL prime returns to the neighborhood. Okay? So the distance and therefore X, and we somewhere defined X sub T, um, is affected by the number of jumps into and out of the interval. Over long periods, however, we have more jumps into and genes get farther apart a long time. We have more slots to jump into and therefore genes do not stay, okay? Stay nearby. So that process XT that because of the lag in the, in the, in the animation, uh, so XT actually it's a random process describing the distance between GL and GL prime. Okay, so XT is a random process. Um, so for 
so it can be seen that xt is quite similar to a birth death process, okay, when we have a, a, a population, and the population here are the genes, the distance between GL and gene prime, and that population either grows or shrinks as a result of death and birth. However, we have some, some dissimilarity by not having, let me be here, by not having, you cannot move to here. This one does not die. And, and actually when we get, if, if GL and G prime sticks together, okay, out of many jumps away, they can, it's not a, how we call it, a, a, a death. It's not extinction. There's not extinction, absorbing state because we always have HGT between them, okay? So, yeah, so exactly. This is the lambda from state one that symbolizes distance one, and we can account for it by introducing uh, an immigration process of rate lambda. Okay, so this is how we adapted our model into common, um, common desperate process, okay? And just ignore the, these two um, definitions, linear and critical, that are important, uh, that are important, but I don't want to bother you with the details, but we have, we define p, i, j of t to denote the probability that x, t, that distance, will be, um, will, will be at state j, okay? Given that at state, state zero, it was at state i, okay? And this is very common denomination in birthday theory, okay? And by the forward Kolmogorov equations, because this is already for birthday theory and everyone here in some, some, uh, uh, um, some course probably um, encountered that. So the Kolmogorov equations allows us to express the change, and I emphasize the change in Pij of t, for every i and j t. However, let us return why it is important, the change. And now back to biology. So additivity of the SI measure. A measure is called additive if we can translate its values, like mutations, like synteny index along branches of the tree such that it corresponds to the number of events that occurred. So it's, it's quite a theory and Siavash introduced it a little bit in, in last week when he spoke about the correction between the humming distance and the Duke's Canto. This is quite conventional and, and for, for exist, the, the, these corrections of mutation exist for, for many years by classical, like you said, uh, um, Joe Felsenstein, Kimura, and, and such big names. However, can we say something about SI? Now, we define QK as the probability of a gene in the neighborhood to remain there. And QK is, of course, a function of i and j, that you start at some point and you don't get too much far from your reference gene. And now, indeed, with Mike, once we defined that model, we showed that very strong uh, uh, um, equation, okay, or identity observation, that SI, that this SI, asymptotically, of course, 
stands in probability for that rigorous expression. e to the minus uh, 2 lambda t times qk. And qk, I remind to you, is the probability that gl, gl prime stays not far, stays in that neighborhood, in that innate neighborhood of, of, of uh, GL, okay? It doesn't go too far. Yes? What is CI bar? SI. 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 SI bar. Good question. SI bar is, is, the, is the SI, SI you followed. SI is that synteny index that he defined, okay, between genomes. Okay, of autologous genes that the neighborhood and it is average. So SI bar is the average SI. Okay, but yeah, is the average SI that is observed from your two genomes. Okay, so you have your two genomes and you apply this SI measure. So you go every, over every two genes or every gene that is shared between the genomes and you compare the neighborhood. Yeah, I didn't understand average amount of water. Okay, still don't understand, but okay. Yeah, 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 but... but is, it, is it the distance? Exactly, it's at the car distance. The SI is at the car distance. So you have, so every, 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 every gene that is shared between the two genomes well, well, guys, guys, guys. Okay. Uh, we are short in time, so okay. So, so it, it is the Jacardin. It's just the intersection between uh, two sets, and the sets here again are the neighboring genes defined by the neighborhood of every autologous gene. Okay, so yeah, it is exactly the Jacardin. So this, and but but something something very intuitive about this expression is actually, what is this? This is, actually the pr this is actually exactly the probability that these two genes, these two genes do not jump, okay? Because once they jump either the reference gene or the neighboring gene, we lost them. So this is the assumption they don't jump and, or, or the probability they don't jump, okay, under Poisson process. Okay, and QKT is the probability that they don't get too far apart, that they remain, and this is average over every gene in the, that neighborhood. So, yeah, um, and, and this is some simulation how it looks. And the simulation was needed here because that expression was still hard for us to infer. And so by, ex by, by this simulation, we, we saw that actually it follows a process that it called a decaying function. And again, there was some nice mass here that led us to that cool, I think cool uh, identity that the DSI, that the distance based on the SI, based on this, again, what is the SI? This neighborhood, av neighborhoods average over the entire genome that they uh, 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 actually follow that process and this is a decaying function. So it was quite nice observation here that led us and, and more empirical data um, allowed us to refine it. And this is important because actually we do not deal with asymptotic uh, uh, genomes. So we had to actually come with something more realistic. And, 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 and we apply that to, to um, uh, we apply that to, to, to real data. Now in real data, you need to really, like, it's not theory that you can say, hey, um, autologous gene, G here and G here, what else, K here and K here. In life, even this is some task and actually we have now in the lab some projects that dedicated to this because this is really 
an issue identifying autologous genes and it is and we need that for the SI. We need that for, when you when you deal with distant genomes, you are lost in the dark. Okay, so and we apply that to to uh, that database is called um, the database that we applied it. It's called Egnor. It's some um, autologous genes database that allowed us to infer. Um, ontology and and uh, and and apply the Sintin index and that and and then we submitted it and then they uh, with that with that sentence in the conclusion that almost every in in these these clusters that are at the phylogenetic evolutionary rank of a genus. Every second gene underwent HGT. And then they would say, hey, are you crazy? At that very short, shallow level, every second gene underwent HGT? And I said, how do I uh, uh, say, uh, rescue that paper? Because it was a good journal. And then I recall that the result of these Venn diagrams and I told them, hey, have a look at this uh, under these strains of, 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 of E. coli, how the, the, the amount of HGT. And actually, and, and, the, and actually, if you look, if you look, and then I said, hey, it's actually not HGT. I, I'm sorry. I take it back. It's genome dynamics. Okay, there are deletions, there are insertion, translocation, all these genome dynamics events, GDE, that actually um, uh, 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 that actually account for this very big number that tells you something about the importance of gene transfer or genome dynamics. Okay, and also very variable, and we could find it not also in our data, our analysis, but a lot of support in existing uh, 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 literature. So yeah, this is what I say here. But, and let's see, oh, I have, yeah, I have a lot of time. So, but again, but again, the pursuit after analytical expression. Recall that the identity we are after is lambda t, reflecting the expected number of event jumps back to the theoretical model. Jumps occurred along a path, a path of length t, or, or whatever length. Or actually, lambda t is the length of the path. In the expression that I showed you, Okay, that expression, the SI bar, this is measured from the data. And we, are, we want to extract lambda t. We have an unresolved component, QKT. And this takes me to the Kolmogorov equation. The Kolmogorov, QKT is a function of P sub ij of t. Once I know P sub ij of t, I calculate immediately Q sub k. And the Kolmogorov uh, uh, forward equation gives us the change in P i j t. How, and, and Mike and myself sweat like crazy, and that paper that, that paper with that first paper that introduced the, the jump model could not have that expression. So we, we had all the analysis was done with that uh, 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 more um, heuristic approach. And, but now, but, but, after some, some uh, first we developed ourselves using generating functions and, and some nice mathematics, but then, then we found 
that actually the birthday theory, and it goes like 50 years back, actually had some nice, uh, um, nice uh, uh, expressions that comes from spectral theory and orthogonal polynomials that actually gave us p sub ij. So first we solved for that, we found that. Analytical expression, these are very tough uh, uh, rational functions in, in k and in t, of course in t that you solve, you don't know t, okay? But when you extract t, okay, you solve it numerically, you can find that t or lambda t, okay? And then once we have pij of t, we can come with, we can compute q k of t, and we have the solution for that, meaning analytical uh, uh, solution for lambda t. Okay, for given S i bar. So this is with QKT. Now, consistency that also I think Siavash uh, mentioned, maybe not. So consistency, do we have, do we have two lambda t's that yield, okay, identicality or, or, or uniqueness that yield the same S i bar? This, is, this was shown that actually the method, there is a one-to-one -one mapping between lambda t and si bar, which means that the method is consistent. You, given your si, you will find uniquely lambda t, the distance, which is a very, very desirable property in phylogenetics and in statistics in general. Consistency in, statistic, in statistics in general, a very desirable uh, 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 property. And this is uh, uh, now in under review. I'm laughing because I don't want to tell you what the reviews we obtained for this paper and even the, the previous paper by Ricom, but... Uh, what can I? What can I do? I, I I still I still submit. I didn't give up. So um, yeah, but uh, um, okay. But and and actually that it's quite nice in terms of time that I have time to say all these things that are not pure mass. That that. Actually now, because several things, uh, uh, I'm now presenting first out of enthusiasm, and this is so, so and, and also, so you say, okay, lousy paper, but that paper actually awarded me that paper and the previous paper, this is, this is at MBE, Molecular Biology and Evolution, and this is also at some quite, uh, under review in some OK journal. Um, and actually, all this jump model and the expression and ev everything inside, and they so awarded me quite a nice grant in Israel. And it's not for, for pr bragging, bragging? It's not for bragging, rather to to show the, 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 the volume, the extent of all this approach and the merit and actually as some... Uh, uh, so actually also to say something about this. So we all the time felt, and this is why I came to Mike with, with this, okay, let's do some model, let's define some model, some rigorous model, some stochastic model. Having a model that allows you to infer and in particular uh, uh, analytical solution for distances, distances, lambda t is distance in terms of hgt. 
I showed you the importance of HGT in general to biology. Having analytical expression to measure distance, number of HGT between genomes is so important. So I came to my colleague and friend, Eugene Kunin, from the, you know, it's one of the fathers of the CRISPR mechanism, the evolution of CRISPR, not the technology. And I presented to him the jump model. And then we came with that project. So this is, so I, I, this is work on, on, on progress, but as I said, a few days ago I was, I was announced that also we got some uh, decent, uh, uh, decent grant for that, meaning that there is acknowledgement in the, at least in the importance of it. So a model for AGT allows us to study other genome dynamics processes. One of such is genomic islands, which are clusters of adjacent genes, normally acquired horizontally with distinct functions, such as bacterial defense or patho pathogenicity. So, now, by the jump model, jump model is some random process. We can assess the frequency of genomic islands that occur by chance. It's not by any biology, just by chance, just by evolving two genomes evolve, okay? And, and then I said, Eugene, Tell me the, the significance of it. And then, and then I took this from our significance. Uh, uh, um, why it is imp so example of such sequence conservation beyond operons include super operons such as those encoding ribosomal proteins or the CRISPR system. Okay, so it is so important to actually now we can, and what is the idea? The idea is, any distance, distance between genomes, the expected number of jumps, or the number of jumps that occurred between, this is the distance, between the two genomes, defines, induces an island distribution. So what is that distribution here? So this, if you have length 0 0.4, 0 0.4 is the expected number of jumps for every gene. This is the distribution of genomic islands between, shared between the two genomes. And this is for 0.3 and for 0.2. See how the distribution change and why this is that? Because they are very nearby, near one another. So you will have many more longer stri long strings that have not been um, interrupted, okay? And here, since so many genes jump, you will have mostly islands of lengths one, not almost no islands. L lengths one is, is some, some n actually no islands, uh, but you still have these probability or frequency of, of these islands, but see the difference. So what you can do with this, we can assess by few approaches, distance between any two genomes, few approaches, distance between, between the SI with the, with the jump model, so this is one, but we also have the, the, the distance that you always use for like the 16S, the, the mutation distance, and we show actually correlation, this is known, but we can now find the correlation between point mutation distance and genomic and, and the jump distance. So we saw that, we show that correlation and we can find the distance and then between any two genomes and look for exceptional islands. Exceptional islands and how Kunin says, this can amount to the importance of exploring the CRISPR. Of course, probably we will not find the CRISPR, but 
but yeah, and actually it, it, it relates to some quite old work of, of, of Kunin's group that I was part of that, that actually became very cited about analytical approaches for, for um, pathogenicity island and, and, it, and, and uh, 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 toxicity. So I want to recap here and to say that genome dynamics events provide much finer, oh, and this is actually answered the why, much finer footprints than the conventional phylogenetic markers of housekeeping genes. The 16S is normally the phylogenetic marker, but in strains of bacteria, 16S is identical. Harnessing this dynamics is essential for, to leverage these footprints to systematics. And this is what we did with the jump model. This can be done by an accurate statistical modeling of these processes and devise tractable approaches to trace them which is the pursuit after analytical expressions, and results on real data should be con confronted with other approaches and existing knowledge. Okay, and I want now to acknowledge, so the jump is, I told you how it started, Mike came to visit Benny Shaw, and with Haggai, now that Haggai is also part of uh, other project. Um, oh, <laughs> I, I just uh, I wrote this. So Doron Zilberger, actually Doron Zilberger is a famous uh, algebraist from uh, Rutgers. I had the, so Haggai is from Oort Braude <laughs> and this should be Doron Zilberger from Rutgers. So we, we had this, uh, we had, we needed the own uh, uh, intervention on uh, involvement in order to solve these crazy polynomials resulting from the, from the, the, the Q sub K and the PIJ. Uh, Gul Sevilla was my student, um, then guys from Bielefeld, Yael Nerna was my student, guys from Bielefeld, Daniel Doer and Jens Stoy. And this, the SI project, uh, uh, well, not, let's not go over, but what now with the genomic islands that is really new is, is like a few days ago, I was announced about that very nice grant with Eugene and Yuri Wolf from the NCBI. And of course, Mike is always uh, there I should, again, normally I acknowledge Eliezer and I don't know why Eliezer skipped here. Maybe he's, maybe he's here somewhere. Normally, I, because Eliezer is everywhere and really normally I, probably he, he is somewhere underneath. But uh, yeah, I, I finished.